In this video, I'm going to show you how I solved the ESSR quiz in Lugano, where I was one of the quiz winners. And you can see here on my batch where I live in Abu Dhabi and it's apparently just a small village in Switzerland. Anyways, so yeah, I won the quiz in uh, the ESSR meeting. I was not really expecting this, but I can show you here all my answers that I came up with. I'm not sure if you can read this, but we go through a couple of these cases where I was correct, like many of these were wrong. And we will start in today's video with the case number one. So case number one, I'll show you the images here and then I will show you how I came up with my answer because I actually got quite close with the answer. So so let's dive right in. First step to answer the quiz, obviously while watching at the cases at the meeting location itself was realizing that the cases are really hard and this is not something you can just solve while thinking about the case because that would be not challenging at all for most people and so they really want to challenge people because the quiz panel then really had to show their skills on stage and for that the cases you can expect a certain amount of difficulties and intrigues. So this is what I did, I made pictures of every case with my phone and then at a later point during one of the lectures I just scrolled through the pictures and or looked at the pictures and was thinking about what could be the answer and did some Google research and I will try to replicate what I did now especially for this case one here and if you like the video then I can also make videos about the other cases. Now this is case one and you can see uh, this was shown on one of these big screens here and the case one was a male, 69 year old, so we have an old patient and he has a known thoracic tumor with new hip pain. Now we can see the radiograph here, we have the, you know, the, the opacity here on the right lung and yeah, that's nice to show but here we can also see on the CT, chest CT that we have this mass here and if we zoom in based on the angles, we go through the details in just in a couple of seconds so we can see the angles here, look at these, we might have some other stuff here, maybe there's a dot here, this one here I think are just vessels, we don't see anything on the other side, there is no pleural effusion, also not based on the radiograph so and we don't see any other lesions here on the other side and from what we can see on the radiograph I, I don't see any osteolysis uh, and we potentially can see a little bit of sclerosis of the rib. Now this was something that was pointed out by the panel. I didn't see that. I don't think it made a big difference for me uh, while going through the case. Okay, so this was uh, the first image. Now they provided not this image. <laughs> Where is the second image? Yeah, this is the second image. And here we can see an MRI of the pelvis, two planes. They showed a T1 and a STIR image. Now I hope this can is visible also on your screen. So what we can see here is edema in the abductor muscles, mainly minimus and medius muscle, but not all of the muscle is affected. So we have this central area here, which is not affected. It goes down all the way here around the greater trochanteric region, maybe even a little bit of bursitis. We don't really know. Uh, it's hard to tell just on one plane, but at least we have edema in the muscles and to a lesser degree also on the gluteus medius on the right side also here either origin of one of the uh, quadriceps muscles or it's just some adjacent of the shudima lower uh, below the greater trochanter so this is everything that we see here is fine now the reason why they show the t1 i would believe is just to see what's going on with the muscles now we don't see a large amount of fat infiltration or change or atrophy for that matter there is no marked asymmetry in this regard. Uh, what we don't see is a mass underlying here. So the fatty streaks are in the muscle, the fat planes are normal. So we don't see a distortion of the architecture, which gives a high suspicion that this is just normal edema uh, and not some underlying other cause, right? So I think this is the reason why they have this T1. So let's take the case apart. So the clinical formation is known thoracic tumor. Now, because it's known, I would expect it's not something super aggressive that they would have to resect or do radio, uh, uh, radiation therapy or something like this. So this is something like either benign or semi-malignant. Otherwise, it would not be known. It's kind of like implying that this is not like a super aggressive tumor, like um, like uh, lung cancer, right? So that's I think that's was the information that we got from here. And then we have new hip pain. So the tumor was long time known, or at least a longer time known, and then new hip pain. Otherwise, it would be thoracic tumor with hip pain. But this was a pre-existing condition. And then on top of that, we have a new hip pain. Now, the reason for the hip pain will be the edema. We come to that in a second. So when I looked at the tumor, I was, you know, thinking it's a pleural tumor. We have these uh, angles here. So it looks more like a pleural mass sitting here. It's not a lung mass per se. And then with the fact that we have also an additional nodule. So we have something that's 
plural, so uh, at the plural space. And you know, obviously, let's let's go through this. Now, this is not an area where I'm really good at. Now, the stuff that comes to mind is mesothelioma, tumoma, um, any like, yeah, like carcinomatosis of any kind of like tumor in this region. But the fact that we have no effusion, etc., makes this a bit less likely. We don't see any calcification, so asbestosis or any other funny businesses are off. One idea that I had initially when I did not see this yet was solitary fibrous tumor of the pleura. But let me show you how I did this then here in the uh, Google. So, so the first thing that I did, I, I think I did, was pleural tumors differential. So I just want to see like what pleural tumors could be there. And then we can see here mesothelioma, you know, malignant mesothelioma with effusion. Then we have some other funny tumors of the pleural that I've never heard about. Then mesenchymal tumors like solitary fibrous tumor, synovial sarcoma, desmoid. So there are a couple of areas and then lymphoproliferative stuff here, which, you know, uh, lymphoma, etc. You no, know, just something to keep in mind. Now, primary pleural tumors was the first differential that I had. And then secondary lesions, because we don't have any other things going on. Um, I think these were not very high in my differential. So I was thinking, so it has something to do with a pleural tumor. And now the question is, why does the pleural tumor suddenly have, you know, hip pain like, or a patient with a pleural tumor? And because we are looking at a, a known tumor, I don't think it would have been like a malignant mesothelioma. So I was thinking more of something benign. Now, tumoma doesn't even, you know, is on the list here because it's not a primary pleural tumor. Um, but yeah, so I was this was my first idea, tum tum uh, tumic tumor or tumoma, um, because of, I don't know, <laughs> actually, I don't know. It's just the first thing that came to my mind. I didn't really think about a mesothelioma after all uh, because of the lack of effusion. So, okay, so yeah, going back to the image. Why would we have the edema here? Now, what can, what can muscle edema be? So what's our, what are the differentials for muscle edema? So it could be a muscle strain, a, a, yeah, a strain could be, uh, injury. Now, this all, you know, it's nothing traumatic because that doesn't fit the history. So it must be something inflammatory. And when muscle is inflamed, it's called myositis. So the, I think what I did was then just going back to Google and trying um, pleural tumor myositis, something like this. And you come very quickly up with the idea that you are looking at the perineoplastic syndrome because otherwise it's hard to connect these things. So myositis can be a perineoplastic thing. Because we don't have a malignant tumor, I was not going this route. And I was actually looking more for tumoma and myositis. And so we can see tumoma associated perineoplastic myositis. So very quickly, we can check this one out and see that, yeah, muscle contractures, tumor, tumoma associated perineoplastic myositis. So this seems to be a thing. Um, Eustenia gravis. Obviously, we don't have the information or any indication that this was actually happening, but still, I, I thought tumoma might be the best, you know, differential. So, what did they have? Like, they didn't even show anything. So, we can also add MRI diagnostic. Yeah, so I think this one, I don't remember which cases I actually saw. So, here we have a patient with some myositis. Uh, do they show anything more? Let's see what they say. History of myos seropositiva myosthenia gravis, post-tumomectomy for invasive tumoma. And then she developed uh, increased CKA myositis antibody. Uh, muscle showed patchy edema and inflammation, figures one and two. And given the history of myosthenia gravis and tumoma, the diagnosis of granulomatous myositis was made, and then they treated it, whatever. So yeah, this is basically the, how I came up with the paraneoplastic myositis with tumoma and we can also go for images and I can see here we have another one autoimmune neuromuscular disorders inflammatory like a couple of images here um, giant cell myositis so we're just finding some concurrent myosthenia gravis. So I was more in this direction. Now, you can see here in the answer I showed the link. So the number one answer for me was tumoma with Paraneoplastic myositis. Um, that's I think is fairly close to a to the real answer, and I can show you the real answer here just in a second. So this was the the answer, and you can see here drug-induced non-infective myositis. This was the ultimate right answer, and the reason was patient was on nivolumab for immunotherapy for the mesothelioma. So it was a mesothelioma, and the patient had this drug 
and this was a perineal, uh, this was a drug-induced non-infective myositis from this tumor and not a peroneoplastic myositis, but this was the differential, and which is exceptionally rare with malignant mesothelioma, but would be much more likely, or not much more likely, but a bit more likely with a tumor. And I think I probably scored a point here, uh, to be honest. Okay, there you have it. So this is how I solved this case. And if you want to see also other cases, how I solved the other ones, uh, at least the ones that I got close to or even correct, then just let me know in the comments below and I'll make another video. See you then. Bye-bye.